Hey guys, welcome back to that card review series. So today we're going to look at another card from Dragons of Legends, a card that came out the same time Soul Charge came out, and it got overhyped and overrated, and, you know, it was because they were pretty much revealed at the same time. You know, people were like, oh, God of Treasure broke and Soul Charge broke, and to be on the contrary, this card is garbage. This card is trash. So I'm going to go over it, and I'm going to explain why this card is garbage and this card is trash, and the reason why you should not even play it, or even consider playing it. So, Guard of Treasure is a continuous spell card. It reads, Activate this card by discarding five cards. Draw two cards. While this card is on the field, draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw during your draw phase. Alright. The reason why this card is trash, it's because it's a neg four? Yeah, a neg four. When has a card ever been good because it's a neg four? That is a ridiculous amount of neg. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of resources. You know, you are constantly, constantly counting resources. You see in my daily duels, my vitamin Y, me sitting there like, okay, I have six cards, my opponent has four. Or, I have three cards, my opponent has six. And, you know, that could be the difference between winning or losing the duel just because of how many cards do you have to play with. This card negs you four. Four. That means you're going to be a whole four cards behind your opponent. If you don't understand what I mean. Alright, let's say you're going first. You draw, so you have six cards, your opponent has five. So, I know Yu-Gi-Oh! is unfair in that aspect where, you know, if you win the dice roll, you're already up by resources because you draw that six card. But, you have six, your opponent has five. You play Guarded Treasure. Activating Guarded Treasure is a neg one. Activating Continuous Spell Cards is a neg one. So, you activate it, you discard your five cards in your hand. That's in your entire hand that you have left. Discard your whole hand, draw two cards. So... Like I said, the Guard of Treasure, that's a neg 1 already. You just cut a 5 card, so that's a neg 5. So you neg 6, then you draw 2, so neg 4. So literally, go, starting into the duel, just because you play Guard of Treasure, you got 2 cards in hand. Yep, 2 cards in hand versus your opponent drawing. 6. 2 versus 6. Yeah, good luck coming back from that. You, Those 2 cards that you drew must have to be the best shit ever. Best shit ever. And yeah, sure, you get that additional draw, so you go up to 4, but you're still down. God of Treasure has to remain on the field for at least two turns to break even from playing this card. That's bad. That's really bad. And also keep in mind that this whole discarding thing, activate this card by discarding, that's a cost. So Dark World thinks they can be nice and cheeky and be like, oh, I got my card destruction back. Activate this and discard their hand and think they get their effects? No, that's a cost. The only ones who get it is Fables, but who the hell plays Fables, right? Um, just to clear up any misunderstanding, activating this card is the discard 5 draw 2. So, even if your opponent goes activated discard 5, you can't go in between the chain and MST it so they don't get their plus 2. They get their plus 2. The card has to resolve when it's activated. So, activate it, discard 5, draw 2. Then you can MST it. But that's what I'm saying. In this game of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, especially right now, where everybody is main decking triple MST, and you should be main decking triple MST, and if you're not main decking triple MST, you better freaking reevaluate yourself, because MST is hot shit right now. Like, MST can handle almost every single deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, so you should definitely be playing MST. From Bujins to Plus One, Fire Fist to 3.5 Access to even Mermails. You know, once you see that they're playing Mermels, you know, as soon as they flip up that sphere, MST. So, definitely, MST should play. And just, just for, you know, scaring your opponent, back row popping, you know, uh, blind spacing, if you do that, MST is that good. And definitely should be ran at 3. So, in this format where people are running MST at 3, you really think that someone's going to let you get this off and let you draw 2 cards every single draw phase? No. No. As soon as I see that you play Guarded Treasure, you just card your five cards and you drew two in my turn and I didn't know and I got MST in my hand, I don't give a shit about the rest of your back row. Actually you probably don't have any other back row because all you got is two cards. So let's say benefit of the doubt that the two cards that you drew were back row and you set those two. Okay. That means you have no monsters. That means you have no mo no monsters because the, uh, the two cards that you have were back row, so you set them both. And I got six cards and one of them is MST. I'm gonna MST that Guarded Treasure. Now all I got I got five cards in my hand to fight those two back row. Two back row. Alright, so I summon a monster, bottomless. Alright, go. Go ahead. You draw. You your turn. Draw. Not including that maybe if I set some back row. So let's say that I opened up with all monsters MST, for example. Alright? So I summon my monster, you bottomless. Alright. I still got four cards in my hand. Draw. 
So all you got left is that one back row and whatever you drew. So versus my four cards, and in my turn, I will be drawing my fifth. So yeah, I'm still up on you. So because you played this card, you were pretty much down in resources. And like I said, this game is resources were always constantly counting. For goodness sakes, Exiton makes us count. Pretty much Exiton promotes us counting resources. You know, you constantly sit there. If you go to Exiton, you're just like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pun has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, going to an Exiton. Let me wipe this field. All right, so it's a game of resources. And this is a neg four. You have to wait. Two turns to break even. Two turns. That's, that's, play the card. Your opponent's turn. Your turn. Your opponent's turn. Your turn. There, you broke even. Then you gotta go, your opponent's turn, your turn. And then you finally, three turns later, you finally got a plus off this card. And you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a fast game. A fast game. Yu-Gi-Oh! can end in a matter of seconds. There, there's OTKs, there's FTKs. Yu-Gi-Oh! can end fast. Those are the, those 8,000 life points can drop down at the blink of an eye, and you won't even see it coming. But the reason why games can last longer than they, you know, than other games, because, you know, both players are keeping the resources up. You know, if both players have a fairly decent large hand and resources are up, then the duel can last long. But you're pretty much putting yourself in a, sh in a dangerous place point in the duel because you play this card in deck forward yourself because instead of you know starting the duel off with six cards instead you decided to just play this card and drop down to only playing two cards like you, you just you decide to handicap yourself also the reason why this card is not that good is because it could be a dead draw even if it was good it could be a dead draw you have to play this card and discard five. It doesn't say up to five. It means exactly five. Sometimes in important duel, you won't have five. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of resources. You are constantly playing and putting out resources. So, pretty much the only time you re you're really going to have five cards is at the beginning of the duel. But like I said, you don't want to play this at the beginning of the duel. Mid-duel, you could, you could have three cards in hand. Draw this. This will be your fourth card. Hmm. I got Guarded Treasure and three cards. Well, can't play it. Gotta wait two more turns before I can play Guarded Treasure. Endor, come on. Endor, when we have like, what, one to two cards? And it's pretty much, the game has been decided, unless you can do some major play to turn it around. Yeah, the major play that you want to turn around the duel at the end of the game? Yeah, you totally want to draw Guarded Treasure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Guarded Treasure is just not good. And we were overhyping it because we saw it with Soul Charge because they were, you know, revealed at the same time. We were like, oh my god, the card's just great. It's just great. But then when you really sit down and you look at it, this card is trash. This card is garbage. Do not play Guarded Treasure. If you come at me with Guarded Treasure in a duel, I will slap the shit out of you. I will beat you. Because you're so down on resources that I can take advantage of that. So definitely do not play Guard of Treasure. Even if even if you're Fabled, even if you're playing Fabled, don't play this card. Because like I said, it can be a dead draw. It is situational. Even with Fabled, it's not it. even the best that can, that it could go into. It's still not that good. So if that's the case, then nobody should play it, right? If you want a continuous spell card that will allow you to draw some cards, play Shard of Greed. If you don't know what it is, it's a continuous spell card. You play it. You wait two turns. You send it to the graveyard. You draw two. It is a plus one that you gotta wait. You gotta wait. It doesn't hinder your draw phase like, like you know, reckless. It just stays on the field, just like this card. So the same way that you activate Guarded Treasure, the same way you just activate Shard of Greed. You don't have to discard anything. You just play it. Pass your opponent. Your turn. You draw. It gets one counter. Pass to your opponent. Your turn. You draw. As we start to greet, send it to the grave. Draw two more. It's that simple. Way better than Guarded Treasure. So, if that's what you want, that's what you're looking for, go ahead. It's just as slow as Guarded Treasure. It does take you two turns. But the thing is, is that Shard of Greed, you wait two turns. You plus one. Guarded Treasure, you wait two turns. You just broke even. Guarded Treasure, to activate it, it's a neg 4. 
Shard agreed to activate it. It's a neg one. So you tell me, what's the better card? You know? So that's pretty much all I got to say about this card. If you guys disagree with me, go ahead and let's have a debate in the comment section. But I think my argument was pretty convincing that this card is trash. But hey, to each is their own. If you want to play this card, go right ahead. But I'm just warning you right now, I don't think you should play it. So, thank you guys for listening to me. Slash, thanks for watching. And uh, I will be back on Thursday with another card to talk about. So, thanks for watching.